In today's story joke, we delve into the dark world of the house of ill repute, unknown to many and home to a few. The joke, however, is hilarious. All right, buckle up, folks, because we're about to take a wild ride through the fascinating history of the world's oldest profession, ladies of the night and houses of ill repute. If ladies of the night are the OG profession, then houses of ill repute must be the OG public institutions. Am I right? But let's not jump the gun. Before we get to the modern day debate on legalizing these houses, let's rewind to ancient times. Turns out, ladies of pleasure weren't just about making a quick buck. It had its roots in religious rituals, with temples doubling as pleasure palaces. Fast forward to the Greeks, who took houses of ill repute to a whole new level of officialdom, complete with taxes on the ladies' earnings. And don't even get me started on the Romans, with these luxurious houses offering everything from hairdressing to post-coital ablutions. But the party didn't stop there. Medieval princes were running red-light districts, and even Elizabethan-era theater moguls were getting in on the action. Throughout history, we've seen countries swing between permissiveness and prohibition. But one thing's for sure, the world's oldest profession just keeps on trucking. So, what's the moral of the story? Well, it seems like we never learn from history. But hey, at least we can say one thing for sure. When it comes to the world's oldest profession, there's never a dull moment. All right, gather around, folks, because I've got a tale that'll have you rolling on the floor with laughter faster than you can say, Natalie. So, picture this. There's this guy, right? He strolls into a house of ill repute with a gleam in his eye and a wad of cash burning a hole in his pocket. And what's his request? Only the finest lady in the joint, none other than the illustrious Natalie. Now, the folks at this executive house, they're not ones to mince words. They straight up tell this guy, hey buddy, Natalie's top shelf and she aren't cheap. You sure you wanna splash the cash on her? But does our hero flinch? Oh no. He's resolute. Yes, he declares with all the determination of a man on a mission. I want Natalie. And just like that, the deal's sealed. Our guy rents Natalie for a cool $2,000, making it rain like he's auditioning for a rap video. But here's the kicker. This isn't just a one-night stand affair. Oh no, our hero's back the next night, demanding Natalie once more. Now, Natalie's not used to this kind of repeat business. She's flabbergasted, to say the least. Whoa there, cowboy, she probably said. Nobody's ever shelled out this much dough two nights running. But hey, if you're game, let's do this. And so, the dance continues. Night after night, our guy's back for more Natalie action, dropping $2,000 like it's pocket change. But here's where it gets juicy. On the fifth night, after their rendezvous, Natalie's feeling all warm and fuzzy inside. You know, she purrs, you must be someone pretty darn special to keep coming back like this. Where are you from? And what does our hero say? Oh, just Europe, he replies casually, as if he's about to drop the punchline of the century. And Natalie, bless her heart, takes the bait. Europe, you say. Funny you mention it. I've got family there. But before she can say another word, our guy drops the bombshell of all bombshells. Yeah, I know. Your father passed away a couple of days ago. Your sister sent me to deliver your $10,000 inheritance. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here.